Influence Church exists to help you know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and influence your world. So, today I have a message that I've been thinking about it for the last uh, few days. Um, but before I go into the message, let me, uh, uh, my wife Kelly, uh, told me that I need to bring back the jokes uh, for the service. So, I have a joke for you. Um, there will be a meeting of the church board immediately after the service, announced the pastor. After the close of the service, the church board gathered at the back of the sanctuary for the announced meeting. But there was a stranger in their midst, a visitor who had never attended their church before. My friend, said the pastor, didn't you understand that this is a meeting of the board? Yes, said the visitor. And after today's sermon, I suppose I'm just about as bored as anyone else who came to this meeting. Well, I hope I'm not going to bore you too much uh, today. But even if that kind of is the case, I'm going to try to keep it short. So, the last few days I've been thinking and uh, I made the mistake uh, to watch little too much news. Any of you been watching some news recently? Man, it's bringing you down. It's nothing uplifting. It's just terrible. It's just negative after negative is negative. So I start thinking about this um, message that I called it No Hope, False Hope, and True Hope. We live in a world, but especially in a country, in my opinion, that has no hope. And I looked at some statistics and since 1960, we in the United States had a 560% increase in violent crime. More than 400% increase in babies being born outside of marriages. Four times increase in divorces. By the way, do you know that actually, and those statistics are based on 2020, so it's not even including the pandemic year, which I think is making everything even worse, in my opinion. Um, do you know that actually U.S. represents percent of the world's population, but we have 80% of the divorces of the, in the world? Since 1960, 300% increase in children living in a single parent homes. More than 200% increase in teenage suicide rate. A drop of 75 points in the average SAT score. And we lead the industrialized world in murder, rape, and violent crime. Welcome to Influence Church, where we are trying to bring uplifting messages. But this is a reality, unfortunately. This is where we are. And if we want to become better, we have to assess where we are. Because we cannot go somewhere if we don't know where we are. And for this reason, I want to give you some of the statistics, some of the data, and some of the current situation of the United States. We have become a nation where the criminal is exalted and the victim is vilified. We became a nation where, where evil is called good, and good, it's called evil. In my opinion, uh, we are nation. We are a nation that is marked by moral regression and spiritual rebellion. Unfortunately, this is a reality. In my humble opinion, the greatest danger that the U.S. is facing is not inflation, is not stock market crashing. Is not even North Korea, Russia, or China. I think the greatest danger that we face as a nation is lack of God in our lives. We took God out of our lives, but still expect to have hope 
in this nation. Apostle Paul is writing to the Ephesians saying this, don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. You were called uncircumcised by the Jew who were proud of their circumcision even though it affected only their bodies and not their hearts. In those days, you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from the citizenship among the people of Israel, of chosen ones. And you did not know the covenant promise God had made to them. But then Apostle Paul is writing this. You lived in this world without God and without hope. See, we cannot have hope without God. If we live without God, we are going to have no hope. Actually, when we try to find hope without God, we will discover and we find what I call false hopes. Unfortunately, those that have false hope are in greater number than the ones with no hope. In my opinion, having false hopes is more dangerous than having no hope. And I know that might shock you. But see, when you, don't have, when you have a false, home, f- false hope, you are feeling safe. You feel secure. And you think you are okay. See, it's much easier for somebody to ha- that has no hope to seek and search the true hope. But the one that has a false hope feels so secure and so safe that he's not seeking, he's not searching, he's not looking for the true hope. For this reason, I think it's more dangerous to have a false hope in our life than not hope at all. A man who finds himself hopeless may be inclined to accept true hope, but the one who has a false hope must admit his hope was in vain before he will accept another hope. And let's be honest, we all understand and it's really hard to accept that we were wrong. I'm not sure about you, but I have really hard time to just say, hey, I'm wrong here, I was wrong there. And I think it's just in our human nature. But without humbling ourselves, without recognizing that we were wrong and give away and give up to that false hope, we'll never be able to receive true hope that actually God has for us. See, the false hopes that we see out there seems to be self-sufficient until time of testing comes. Many people place their hopes in jobs or careers. Many place their hopes in assets or stock market. Many people place their hope in government. Many people put their hope in political parties. And many people put their hope in people. And many times we get discouraged. See, the drunkard who thinks that he can quit any time he likes has a false hope. The drug addict who thinks that he can escape his problems by getting high has false hope. The church member that thinks that the good deeds or membership its all that is necessary to have a relation with God has a false hope. And you know what? Eventually they get disappointed because their hope, it's a false hope. Their hope is not built on a strong foundation and was built on a hill of sand. It's not my style to read the two long Bible verses, but today I will make an exception because I want to read the passage that Jesus, um, uh, Jesus words, and he said this in Matthew chapter seven. See, when Jesus said something, you better pay attention. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. (laughs) 
On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. Because I think they were having false hopes. Anyone who listened to my teachings and follows it wise, like a person who, it's like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes and torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it, it's foolish, like a person who builds a house on a sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. And this is what's happening with people with false hopes. This is happening in today's world to many people that feel like they want to give up on life. Because they were disappointed by whatever. Because they struggle with whatever. And I, when I say whatever, I'm not saying was easy. I'm not saying was nothing. Because many people are battling big fights in their life. They are struggling and they are seeing huge storms in their lives. But without God, it's impossible for them to see the true hope at the end of the storm. Having false hopes will lead us to disappointments, will lead us to collapsing in our lives. But if we want true hope, we have to build on the solid rock. Jesus, actually, it's called the rock because he is the true hope. Trying to have eternal life without Jesus, it's a false hope. Because it's very clear in the word of God that we can have eternal life only through Jesus. Because in him, through him, and by him, we can have eternal life and true hope in our lives. True hope that we find in Jesus is not a wishful thinking. It's not something like, oh, I hope I will get this job. Oh, I hope I will win the lottery. Oh, I hope my kids will turn out okay. Oh, I hope this or that. See, the living true hope that God is offering through Jesus Christ, it's more than a wishful thinking. True hope it's having confidence that God is who he says he is, which brings forth expectation that he will do what he says he will do. Let me say it again. True hope is having confidence that God is who he says he is, which brings forth expectation that he will do what he says he will do. True hope means to wait with expectation for Jesus to be your miracle maker. Just like we sang earlier today. He's a miracle worker on our behalf. It's like looking forward to what amazing things God is going to do because we know his character and because we know his heart for us. We know his desire that he has for us to have life and to have not barely make it through life. He wants to have life and life abundantly. That means a life full of hope, full of true hope, not a false hope. Apostle Paul is writing to Titus, one of his disciples. Uh, in fact, uh, Titus was more than uh, uh, one of uh, Paul's disciples. Apostle Paul called him my true son in faith. And Apostle Paul is telling Titus this. For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. And we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world where is no hope, 
where is now God, so many times. We should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God. While we look forward with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be revealed. While we look forward with hope. Right in the middle of this whole passage that I read is saying, we look forward with hope. But the hope he's talking about here, Paul, is not the wishful thinking. It's just a confirmation, a certitude. It's, he knows that he knows for sure that God, he is who he said he is. And because of that, he's going to do what he said he's going to do. And that is to bring hope in our lives. True hope that we find in Jesus, many people think that it's denying our circumstances. And it's not that. True hope is not just ignoring the facts. It's not just uh, denying uh, uh, our circumstances. But it's a very powerful, strong belief that at the end of the struggle, of the battle, at the end of going through wherever we go today, at the end of the storm, God will help us see the rainbow. God will help us feel the peace that is coming after every storm. I'm not sure how many of you have been in big storms, tornado or, uh, you know, big storms. It's amazing when the storm passes, that amazing peace. The wind stops, sometimes the sun shining, the rainbow comes up, and everything is so full of peace. But that peace, most of the time, we don't experience it until we go through the end of the storm, unfortunately. And many of you are facing different storms in your life. But don't give up. Don't quit. Don't throw the towel. Because you know what? At the end of the struggle, at the end of the storm, at the end of the problems, is gonna, the rainbow is going to shine. And God is going to help us experience his peace in our life. That, by the way, comes at the end of every storm. Apostle, Paul is say, Apostle Peter is saying this in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope. He gave us birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. See, Jesus gave us birth in this amazing living hope. But I start thinking, you know what? Many times, even as a believer, as a Christian, we kind of run out of hope. I'm not sure about you, but I'm a pastor, and sometimes I struggle with having hope, looking forward behind the struggles and the problems. And sometimes I'm overwhelmed by the waves. And I start thinking, why am I not, am I not having that living hope that I was born into it? See, if you are thinking, if we are born in a living hope, and if you think about the word living, that means require life. But that means require nourishing. That means require to be fed. So that living hope that we receive and we are born into it has to be fed, has to be nourished. Understanding that for the living hope, true hope through Jesus Christ to not die, we need to nourish it. And we do that by increasing our relation with God. By increasing our relation with God, we are going to increase the living hope that we have in our life. Deeper and closer we get to God, stronger and better we grow in our living hope, in the true hope. Many Christians grew up in churches, but never grew up in Christ. Many Christians know the hymns, but they don't know him. 
the giver of living hope. Today, I invite you to join me to be intentional and dedicate our life to grow in Christ, in the church, to be able to feed that living hope that he has for each one of us. Apostle Paul is saying in Romans 15, 13, May the God of hope, this is Almighty God. He is the God of hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to be intentional in experiencing and encounter God, not just when we've been given birth into a living hope, but day after day after day on a regular basis. To be able to hold on to this true living hope, we have to learn to rely on this God of hope. We have to learn to rely on Jesus Christ. And I want to give you three points to rely on that are very going to be very short, but very sweet, and hopefully you'll understand how important they are. We have to rely on his presence. If we want to have hope in our life, we need to rely on God's presence and to be able to experience his presence. Not just on Sunday morning in church, not just uh, on Wednesday when we go to uh, Bible studies or Thursday. We have to learn to rely on his presence day by day and every moment, every second of our lives. Because you know what? The moment that we don't feel his presence and we are not in his presence, the hope is going to start wandering away. The living hope that he had for us. Number two, we have to rely, we have to learn to rely on his provision. He said so many times in the Bible that he will provide. Actually, one of the, God's name is Jehovah Jireh, which translates as the Lord our provider. We have to understand that doesn't matter what's going to happen in stock market, doesn't matter what's going to happen with inflation, doesn't matter what's going to happen in the food industry, doesn't even matter what's going to happen with the government. God is still going to be on the throne. It's not going to affect him at all. And he's going to still be the provider for each one of us. We have to learn to rely on that. We have to learn to believe in that. And no matter what, that he's going to come through and he's going to be our provider. Also, we have to rely on his power. Number three, we have to rely on God's power. Because you know what? Many times we are facing battles. And when we face battles, we need somebody to fight on our behalf. And you know what? He will fight for us. He will fight with us. He will be right by our side. But also he will fight through us. God wants to support us, to strengthen us, to encourage us. God wants to go to the battle with us. So no matter the battle, doesn't matter the battle that you are facing today. If you are going to seek God, if you are going to seek his living hope, he's going to be on your side. And you know what? With this amazing God on our side, with this amazing, full of grace God on our side, most powerful I have no doubts that we are going to become victorious over the battle that we are struggling. We just need to push through. We just need to not give up. We just need to not throw in the towel. Do not allow the world to steal your true living hope. To steal years out of your life by giving up. Trust in God. Seek his presence, look for his provision, and watch him fight on your behalf. And that will increase the living hope that he has for each one of us. 
We have to embrace it. We have to hold on to it. This is not something that I want us to uh, learn on Sunday morning and uh, by next week to be gone. This is something that I want each one of us to practice on a daily basis and try to rely on God, to rely on his presence, to rely in his provision, and to rely on his power. Because those are his qualities that he wants to show in our lives. He wants to show us how much he loves us, how much he cares for us, and how much he wants to be with us. When we experience true living hope, when we develop in us the true living hope, it's going to be contagious. It's going to affect people around us. And not because we are a wishful, thinker, wishful thinking people. It's not because we see a half full glass instead of, instead of a half empty glass. And it's just because we will have that living hope, true living hope that only God can provide. And that is going to become contagious. And you know what? It's going to show more and more in our lives, unfortunately, as we go to struggles and problems and battles. Because that where actually the full living hope is going to show very powerful in our lives. So today, my message to any of you that maybe you didn't, make your, didn't give your life to Christ yet. Maybe a long time ago you gave your life to Christ, but you are like, you know what, something happened in the last few years. Maybe something happened during the pandemic. Maybe something happened a long time ago, and you lost that living hope. Today I want to pray for that living home, hope to come back to you. Let's stand up together. I would like for uh, everyone to close your eyes. And if you never gave your life to Christ here in the auditorium or online, watching this message right now or later on, I would like you to just raise your hands because I would like to invite you to get to know this God of hope that can bring you living hope in your life. Not just here on earth, but also eternal. Not just for a short period of time, but forever. Not just to have enough hope to barely make it through life, but to have a hope that is going to help you have an abundant life. So, if you make and if you made that decision, I would like you to say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I pray to you today. I recognize I need you in my life. I got disappointed by government. I got disappointed by politics. I got disappointed by life in this world. I try my own ways and I fail. Today, I give my life to you. I surrender to you and I accept you as my savior and as a true hope, true living hope giver. I need you in my life today and forever. If you said this prayer, please let us know by connecting with us uh, on a website. We will love to mail you a book that is going to help you and take you to a deeper relation with um, God in your life. Doesn't matter how far you are from God. Doesn't matter how bad your sin it is. God has a way to offer you this true living hope. Accept it and hold on to it. Don't let anyone steal it from you. Don't allow the world to just take it away from you. Hold on to it. As everyone else, everyone is keeping their eyes closed. 
Also, I would like to just pray for everyone that maybe you are a follower of God. Maybe you are, you've been a Christian for a long time, but you are struggling right now. You are in the middle of a storm. You are in the middle of a battle. You don't see the end. You don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. You start somehow losing little by little your hope. I would like you to raise your hand because I want to pray for you. Maybe it's a hope for your health. Maybe it's hope for your family. Maybe it's hope for your marriage. Maybe it's hope for your children. Maybe it's hope for wherever. Just raise your hands because we are going to pray. We are a church that believe in prayer. And when we ask, the Bible said, when two or three are gathered together and ask something from the Father in Jesus' name will be given to us. For this reason, we pray together and we believe together for you to receive and to receive a double portion of the hope that you need in your life today to help you overcome the storm, to help you overcome the struggles. Heavenly Father, you see every hand that is raised here in the auditorium or online, sitting in the chairs or standing up, cooking dinner or lunch or just listening to this message. You see the hands that have been raised up. And I'm asking, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, that you will release from heaven hope, true living hope in each person's life. You know the situation better than I. You know the struggle better than I. And I'm asking for you to intervene. You miracle worker, we're asking for you to keep working even when we don't see it. We are so thankful that we can come to you and for you to replenish the hope that we have in you. Recharge our batteries, refill our hearts, and help us to never ever get our eyes off, on, off of you. And for always be intentional in feeding this living hope that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. I cannot think a better song to uh, end this message than the song Living Hope. And I hope you are going to pay attention to the words and then let God, let Spirit, let Holy Spirit, let God's Spirit to really work on us. the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadow of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written, Jesus Christ, my Lord. Christ, 
Christ, 